Welcome Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness. We are back at my test pad at Electrical Island. This is where I set up little seeds of ideas of things that you might like to try for your own settlement builds. And one of those is this mad scientist lab. And it's not fully decorated, like I said, it's just the seed of an idea, something that maybe better fully fleshed out as a full lab or any other number of things. And my last video was on the OR gate. And I actually built this for that video, this contraption that I'm about to show you, but that video was running a little bit long. And this contraption requires multiple types of logic gates as well as power counters and some extra switches and stuff and it just felt a little too advanced for a beginner's tutorial on logic gates but I liked the idea I didn't want to scrap it entirely so we're doing this little bonus episode I've got a switch here that can activate some lights inside the test area it looks like Igor has delivered a couple of super mutants for us to experiment on and I can hit this switch any number of times and that door will never open um, doesn't matter how many times I hit the switch the door is just not going to open but when the switch is on the lights inside the test area are on when the switch is off the lights are off however if I was to enter the proper code, well, then the door is going to open. So let me enter the proper code of 369. And I pull the switch, and the door is open. And we can come in here and set up any experiments that we might like to run on these super mutants. I think that today I would like to run an experiment on just how bulletproof super mutants are. So <laughs> let's go ahead and let these guys out of the cages. Of course, I'm afraid that maybe the door that I have selected is not actually bulletproof. We'll see if my health starts to go down while I, uh, while I enter this code. So, oops, I went one too far and didn't get the code correct and those super mutants sound awfully angry and he is clipping through the door and managing to hit me with his board through the door and the other guy is uh, shooting me through the door well that kind of sucks I think that it is time for me to uh, get out I think I want to get out carpet bomber and see how super mutants do with explosive mini guns and the answer is <laughs> not very well if you've got the explosives expert perks teamed up with that uh, legendary effect so there you go that is what we are going to build today if you're interested in how to do a very easy combination lock for any number of different things stick around and we'll do the tutorial so now. before we actually get to the build I thought that it would be helpful to demonstrate the underlying principle that I used to make that combination lock and it's gonna be a lot easier to see out here in the open on uh, just a wall and it uses more than just the OR gate which is part of why I wanted to have this be its own episode because it's combining a number of different elements of the power system. So what do we have going on this demonstrator to show how this principle works? We've got some input power here that comes to this manual switch and also to this delayed off switch. Those both power the OR gate, so either OR will turn the output on and cycle this power counter. Now the interesting thing about power counters is that they only increment when you add power. And that allows us to use a manual switch as an override for our delay off switch here. Let me demonstrate. 
So I hit the delay off switch and the power counter incremented and I hit it again and it goes up by one again. Now if I hit my manual switch the power counter went from four to five but look what happens now when I hit this delayed off switch. Because there's already power on the power counter nothing happens. The counter only increments when you go from no power to having power. So I can use this manual switch to cycle that thing manually and when the switch is off I can use the delay off switch and when the switch is on when I turn it on it moves up by one but the delay off switch doesn't actually do anything anymore. So that is the principle that we're going to use to make our combination. So let's get started building our combination lock. We're going to need several elements to build this and we're also going to want to program some of these things. So I've got some delay off switches. So I have three digits for my code so I'm going to need three of those and I'm going to have some power counters and I need three of these as well and I'm going to separate those and hook up some terminals to each one so that I can power and program them individually. If I tried to program them all with the same terminal at the same time I would only get one possible number combination. This last terminal I can use to go ahead and hook up to all of my delay switches so that I can program those as well. So we'll get out of the build mode and I'm gonna make this code 369. I always use that code because it's easy to remember because of the song Grandma Plays the Number on Diamond City Radio. Now I am using this principle of interrupting a power counter with an OR gate for a combination lock. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah, but it can be used for any number of different applications. For example, you could have an arena that had a few different modes um, that was locked out with a master switch in your VIP box for example. And you notice I set these delay off switches on one quarter second delay although oh let me do it again sometimes these delay off switches are just a little bit fiddly. Um, I like a quarter second delay because an eighth doesn't reliably activate the power counters and um, a half or one feels a little bit too long. So we're going to get back into build mode now that we've got all of our logic elements programmed. Alrighty. Just store these wires. We don't need them. Actually, we can just store the terminal and store that terminal. And now we can we can move everything inside and kind of get it in the general area that we need it. Now that we have all of our elements in here, we're ready to start wiring. What I've done here is I've got a conduit here that is going to serve as input power for this little contraption here. And we're going to basically take all of our power off of that. So first things first, let's wire each of these delay off switches to this conduit and then let's also set up our wall switch so go in here and grab a wall switch 
switch, which is also going to require power. So I'm just going to set that on the wall and let's wire glitch some power to this insulated switch. Now what we need are three OR gates. So, and that is going to be essentially the principle that I showed you on the wall over there, except kind of replicated three times. So there's three OR gates. Oops, that was actually three AND gates. I'll store that one. I'm going to need that one. So here we go. Instead, <laughs> here are three OR gates. And I'm going to take the power from my first delayed off switch to my top OR gate and my second delay switch to my middle and my final to the bottom and just to make things easier I'm gonna set this switch over here and I'm gonna wire that switch to each of the OR gates and this is what's going to allow us to essentially prevent those delay switches from working so and sometimes you have to look away and there we go now I should be able to glitch there we are now I'm just gonna go ahead and set my switch back over here now clearly you don't have to have place anywhere to do this it's just faster if you have place anywhere so now I've got all of my delay switches set up and we're ready for the power counters. And because I want to have make sure that I keep these in the right order so that I don't mess up my code, I'm going to do this and set that there. And I'm just going to kind of set this inside the wall here a little bit like that and you could probably rug glitch or pillar glitch your way through that if you don't have place anywhere and put that there and then this should um, let's just get rid of this wall for a second now I can take my second digit Actually, I should have just got rid of that wall to begin with. So, come on, snap to it. Well, it wants to be difficult. Did I turn snapping off at some point? Nope, snapping's on. Um, we'll worry about making this look good for the demo later. For now, at least, I'm just going to set that there. And I'm going to get my final digit and hook it to the last of the OR gates. So now what we've got set up is a situation where if we have tripped the main switch, the power counters don't do anything. And if we have not tripped the main switch, the power counters will increment every time we push that delay switch. So, gosh darn it, get back down there on the ground where I want you to be. Not sure why those power counters are not wanting to snap together. They usually go pretty easy. And now that we've got the power counter set up, how do we get the door open? That is where we start to chain logic gates together because I am going to use an AND gate to hook all of those power counters together and it does not want to snap. Oh man, <laughs> this went easier when I practiced it. I'm just going to set that right there. So for this output of this AND gate to be live, I think you can see that each of the power counters, the digit will have to be zero. So that's how we set this up to where uh, all the digits have to be correct 
for the door to open. So I've just wired the output of this AND gate to my door. And we are pretty much done with the wiring here. Now is this, here we, there we go, it went in the right spot. Is this a extremely secure combination lock? No, no it is not. Um, but it's, it's good enough to keep some settlers or some super mutants where they're supposed to be, so that is enough for me. You can certainly layer many additional functions onto something like this. And I'm going to bring my, uh, bring my wall back. And there we are. It doesn't look great right now, but I think you saw in the demo that you can kind of get everything neatened up and looking good. Let's test this and make sure that it actually operates. So I hit the switch and the door does not open. But I set these counters to say three and six and nine. And then when I hit the switch, the door opens and that's all there is to it. We have just built a combination lock that it doesn't necessarily matter what order you do things in, but it looks good enough for something that, uh, that only takes four logic gates and maybe 10 minutes to actually build. So I hope you liked the video, and if you do, be sure to hit the like button down below. If you wanna see more, be sure and subscribe. I think that my next tutorial is probably going to be on the exclusive Norgate. If you didn't like, please tell me why down in the comments so that I can try to do better for you next time. Until next time, my name is Nacho Business, and I'm saying it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.